Thank you. Good. <clears throat> yeah. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Family Fellowship Outreach Church. How you doing? I'm Julius Noble, and we're in Robbins in our suburb, suburb of Chicago, and we're here, and, and God is also here with us. And so we want to thank you for being here. We'll open up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you would be, Lord, with us and that you would have your guidance and your hand upon us. Lead us, guide us, direct us. By your spirit, Lord, there's nothing impossible for you, Lord. Uh, use this message to bless every one of our lives today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And happy Mother's Day also to everybody on this. Uh, amen. The... The 8th of May, 2022. Amen. Amen. These days go by so quickly. God is good. Now, I'm thankful for the mother. I've got my mother here and some other mothers here, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm so thankful for our mothers uh, and uh, all that they do for us. I thank God for uh, the fact that uh, we had God sent his only begotten son through a mother, uh, a young lady that was that they gave birth to Christ, and uh, Christ grew up to be a, a great man. And so we thank God for mothers, and I want to thank God for that. Today we're going to be looking at not only mothers, we're going to be looking at a particular mother. Uh, and the story is not really, it's not wholly about this mother, but there's going to, it's going to end on a note about this mother. This is a famous mother that we're going to learn about. Also, she's a woman, and we're going to learn some things as we end up looking at her story also. And we're going to uh, 2 Kings chapter 9 today. And we're going to finish up this sermon that we're looking at. Amen. Hallelujah. And again, the message is the power of being focused on doing the right thing for God. The power of being focused on doing the right thing for God. We're going to go through Chapter 9 and several other chapters also in a moment. I'll keep it for, I believe, about 35 minutes. All right, let's read the sermon text. 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 1 to 3. Let's read. And Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Get yourself ready. Take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. Now, when you arrive at that place, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshai, and go in and make him rise up from among his associates and take him to an inner room. Then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and do not delay. Father, right now, we thank you for all your wisdom, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you use your anointing, Lord, and, and, and bless us, Lord, with your presence here today. Speak as only can we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, as we open our text, a student prophet had been assigned by Elisha to go to Ramoth Gilead. Now watch this. He, he had been assigned to go to Ramoth Gilead. Why? To, he had been assigned to, to, to anoint. To anoint the prophet. He had, he had been assigned to anoint him king. He, to anoint him king rather. And he was supposed to do it privately. He said go. He said get there and then leave. Okay. We're going to find out why in a moment. Now, after anointing, he was going to anoint this man by the name of Jehu. Jehu was going to be anointed the new king of Israel. There was already a king of Israel and already a king of Judah. And so he, he, he's there. He's going to anoint him. And then he's supposed to flee immediately and run and move. Now, what God was doing now, God was preparing. There was, a, there was about to be a major revolt in Israel's leadership. God was cleaning out some, was cleaning the house. There were too many, there were several people that were not truly following him. They were following pagan gods and doing a lot of things that they should not have been doing. And so we're going to find that. So this is a, a chance where God is using a man, is going to use a man by the name of Jehu, who really follows him. 
But I want you to look at what happens here as we watch this. Watch what happens. So we go to verse number four. Second Kings chapter nine, verse four. Now watch this. It said this, I'm going down for verse four, going all the way down to verse 10. So the young man, the servant, now this is what it says, the servant of the prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he arrived there, remember he's, he's there to anoint this man, all right? And when he arrived there, the captains of the army were sitting. Okay, I'm in verse five. Oh, commander, I have a message for you, O commander. And Jehu said, for which one of us? And he said, for you, commander. Then verse six, then he rose, arose and went into the house. And he poured oil on his head and said to him, thus says the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of the Lord over Israel. Verse seven, you shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master, that I may revenge, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish. Hear that now, the whole house. The whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab all the males in Israel, both bond and free. That's all his family. That's what it's saying there. Verse 9, so I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Bashar, the son of Ahijah. The dogs shall eat Jezebel in the vicinity of Jezreel, and there shall be, and there shall be none to bury her. Remember that word, there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. The mission was secret. That was why he was told to flee. The mission was secret. It's almost like a 007 mission impossible. Watch what happens here. God is busy, and he, God is, spoke to Elijah, told, told this, this student, say, go anoint him, run. Because he doesn't want, they, they're trying to keep it secret that God is moving. God is, is, is raising up a revolt against the bad leadership and the, and the pagan uh, people that were leading in, 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 in Judah and Israel at that time. Watch what happens there. So the mission was supposed to be secret. Watch what happens. So we go down to verse 11. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 11. Then remember his name, Jehu, Jehu. Jehu has been anointed. Jehu has now been called to God to do this thing. The people that he's going to take out, they don't know that Jehu is about to do this. That's why he's keeping it quiet. Jehu has been heard from God that he's got to do something. And he's got to do it with some people that he's been working with before now. But God said, now it's time to change this. Watch what happens here. Verse 11. Then Jehu came out to the servants of his master and said to him, It's all well. When Jehu, now Jehu came back after being anointed. So now Jehu comes out of that room. Remember the, other, the, the, the young man that anointed him with all has now left. He ran through the door. Jehu comes back out with the regular people. And look, they, they almost talk like we talk. Watch what, look what he said. It's all well. Why did this madman you come to you? And he said, you know the man and his babble. He said, you know people just be talking stuff. You know, that's all. That's what he's saying. Look at what he said. Watch this, watch this. Verse 12. And they all, and they said, a lie! Tell us now. So he said, they said, we know you lying. Tell us, what was that man? Why did he take you in there by yourself? Besides that, we see oil on you anyway. They, but anyway, they, 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 they think he got oil running on him. Right. Why, was he, why was he here? Say a lie, tell us. So he said, in verse 12, tell us now. So he said, thus and thus he spoke to me, saying, thus says the Lord. I have anointed you king over Israel. Then each man hastened to take his garment off and put it under him on the stuff of the, of the top of the they, they laid it down like a like a, a veil on the stairs because all of a sudden they realized this man is to, to be the king. He's the king now. And 
they blew the trumpet saying, Jehu is king. Jehu is king. Jehu is king. It's going to get busy. It's going to get busy now. Verse 14. Jehu began working to overthrow King Joram. Joram is the king that he, he has replaced. Now watch this. Please watch this, y'all. Don't miss this. Verse 14. 2 Kings chapter 9. So Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram. That's right. God is, so he's conspiring against Joram. Joram is the, the, is the king that he's going to replace. And mind you, it gets kind of bloody, by the way. That's kind of how it worked back then. People that just stepped down, you got to knock them out. Watch what happens there. Now, Joram had been defending Ramoth Gilead, he and all Israel against Hazael, king of Syria. Watch what happens there. But King Joram, but King Joram had returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds which the Syrians had inflicted on him when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. And Jehu said, if you are so minded, now it's Jehu, Jehu. If you are so minded, let, let no one leave or escape from the city to go tell it in Jezreel. He said, now, this is what Jehu, Jehu, Jehu says this to the men. He said, look, don't tell anybody that I've been anointed king because they'll spread it. So don't, he said, don't tell anybody because we got to get it done. We don't want them ready. Jehu, he said he wants to get in there and do what he got to do. All right. So Jehu, he wanted to keep it secret. So then, I said, verse 15. So watch what happened. Then we go to verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 16. Now watch what happens here. Going down to verse 20. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel. For Joram was laid up there. And Ahaziah, it a Ahaziah, rather, Ahaziah, king of Judah, had come down to see Joram. So now, Jehu is now seeking to go and do what God wants him to do. So he's traveling. And so he travels, and he's going to Jezreel. Watch this, verse 17. Now, Jezreel was a city. It had, it had a wall around it. And they had people on the towers. And they had somebody watching. Watch what happens there. So, said verse 17. Now a watchman stood on the tower in Jezreel. He saw the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company of men. He saw several men coming with Jehu. Jehu is coming. Jehu means business. And Joram said, get a horseman and send him to meet them and let him say, is it peace? So he said, so what he said, he said, send a man to him and go out there and find out why they're coming. Is he coming for a peaceful reason or not? So, so, so they sent a man out to ride out there to meet the, them coming. You may know some people like this. This man is so focused on doing what God wants him to do. Watch how he deals with the question when the man comes to him. Okay, verse 10. So the horseman went to meet him and said, thus says the king, is in peace. And Jehu said, what have I, what have you to do with peace? Turn around and follow me. And he keeps right. He don't give him a specific answer. So the guy lines up with him and keep and ride toward the castle, toward the fort. And, the, and turn around and follow me. And the watchman reported saying, the messenger went to them, but is not coming back in the city. That's what he's saying. I said, now the man we sent out there, he's right with them. Then he sent out a second man. They still riding toward him. He sent out a second man. He sent out a second horseman, verse 19, who came to them and said, Thus says the, says the king, is it peace? And Jehu answered. What have you to do with peace? Turn around and follow me. And the watchman 
report how he looking now. Now this man got behind Jehu now and he ride with Jehu now. They still, at the council, they still don't know what's going on. And the watchman report said, he went up to them and is not coming back. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshai, for he drives spiritually. Now, they, what they say about Jehu right here, Jehu may have been kind of hyped up because right here they say he looks like Jehu and he's driving fiercely. So he may have been a kind of hyped guy, but, some, but the guy said he looks like Jehu, the son of Nimshai. They can't figure out. So they say, what's going on here? So they're trying to figure out what's happening. Now, again, what's happening here, we're about to see what God has moved. God has given Jehu a a, an obligation to go out there and to change, to, to deal with these people and wipe out certain leaders. Because, and, and, and Jehu is going to do what he tells him to do. He's obedient to God. Watch this. And, and we need to learn how to be obedient to God. When God tells us to do something, we need to learn how to do what God tells us to do. That's one of the things we can get from this. Watch this. So then we go to verse 21. We're going down to verse 26. So Joram, look at this, verse 21. So Joram said, make ready. And his chariot was made ready. So the king now is going to go. He's going to ride down and, and look at, he's going to go down and meet Jehu and them and see what's coming. I, he said, I just sent two people out and nobody's coming back. I don't know if, if these guys are here for peace or what. Let me go down there. So he rides down there. Verse 21. Verse 21. And he went out, all right, and they, then Joram, king of Israel, and uh, Ahaziah, Ahaziah, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot, and they're both riding down there. They, they're riding up to him. And they went out to meet Jehu and met him on the property of Naboth the Jezreelite. Naboth got killed, and we're going to see how that, before, Naboth got killed was killed for his property by Jezebel and somebody. All right, Ahab, watch out. Watch what happened here. Hint, hint. Verse 22. So he answered, what? He's, all right, not ha So Joram said, make ready. And his chair, all right, verse 22. Now it happened when Joram saw Jehu that he said, is it peace, Jehu? So he answered, now he gets serious because now Joram's there. And Joram is related to Ahab. He's the child of Ahab and Jezebel. And listen what, listen to what Jehu tells him. What peace as long as the hollow trees of your mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many. What peace? We can, he said, I, we can't have no peace as long as we're doing what your mom has laid a foundation for, for us to do. We cannot have peace. That's what he was saying. Verse 28, then Joram turned around and fled and said to Ahaziah, treachery, Ahaziah. Now Jehu drew his bow with full strength and shot. Jehoram, between his, his arms, he got him in the back. Between his arms, an arrow came out at his heart. And he sank down in his chariot. Verse 25, then Jehu said to Bichar, the captain, pick him up. Pick him up and throw him into this track of the field of Naboth. The Jezreelite. But remember when you and I were riding together behind Ahab, his father, that the Lord said this burden upon him, set this burden upon him. God had put a curse on Ahab and his children because of what they did to Naboth. They took his field and killed him with a lie. Watch this. Surely, he said, verse 26, surely I saw yesterday the blood of Naboth in the blood of his sons, says the Lord, I will repay you in this plot, says the Lord. Now therefore take and throw him on the plot of ground according to the word of the Lord. 
to the word Lord. It's not over. It's not over. What happened? What story am I talking about 15 years ago? 15 years earlier than this time. It happened 15 years ago in 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 1 to 3. It was 15 years early. It was in 899 BC. 15 years earlier than this time. And, it said, and this is what happened in, in 1 Kings 21, verse 1 to 3. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel. That same town. Had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, give me your vineyard. Give me your vineyard. That I may have it for a, a vegetable garden. Because it is near next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. I will give you its worth and money. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my father to you. What, he was, what Naboth was saying, look, he said, this is my family's property. I'm not going to sell it to you. I don't care how much money you give me. So one thing led to the other. And Ahab got upset. And then his wife said, I'll get the field for you. Jezebel, his wife's name was Jezebel. And so then we go to 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 7. And we see how Jezebel arranged for her man, her husband, to get this man's property. Who refused to sell it. So she set some men up and told them to lie on this man. And we see it in 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 7. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, you now exercise authority over Israel. Arise and eat food and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelites. His wife said this those years before, 15 years earlier. And, Je and Jezebel got Naboth's property and look at how she got it. In 1 Kings 21, Verse 11 to 19. And this happened in 899 B.C., 15 years earlier. Jezebel used evil, an evil plot. And we go down to verse 11, going to verse 16. 1 Kings 21. And it said that, So the men of his city, the elders and nobles who were inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent to them. As it was written in the letters which she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth with high honor among the people. Watch who they sit you with. And two men, scoundrels, came in and sat before him. And the scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth, in the presence of the people saying, Naboth has blasphemed. They were lying. Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones so that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Nabal has been stoned to death. Verse 15, and it came to pass when Jezreel, it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Nabal had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money. For Naboth is not alive but dead. Look at what her husband did. Then they did what Ahab did. Verse 16. So it was, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Abel, that Abel, that Ahab got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. When you do wrong, God knows how to watch out. So guess what happened? Look at what happened. So then, so then we go back. So we go back to our time. We go back to the story. 15 years later, at the field now where Jehu was taking over, watch what happened. We go back. Verse 27, 2 Kings chapter 9. I'm not going to jump. I'm coming right back. I'm, I want to show you what happened. So now we're back. We're going to look at God. Look at God's hand on this situation. Watch what happens. It's connected. Chapter 9, 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 27. Please watch this. 
But when Ahaziah, Ahaziah, king of Judah, saw this, he fled by the road to Beth Hagen. Remember? So now remember, now we're back here where Jehu is about to take over the take over the over over the, the castle, the, the tomb, the uh, tower. He fled by the road to Beth Haven. Beth, Beth Hagen. So Jehu pursued him. Now Jehu, Jehu is running. Remember, Jehu is leading the revolution now. He's taking over for God right now. And he pursued him and said, shoot. So Jehu pursued him and said, shoot him also in the chariot. So they did. And they did so at, at the outset to Gur, a hill called Gur, and which is by Eblam. Then he fled to Megiddo and died there because he got shot. He died there. Verse 28, watch what happens there. Don't miss this. And his servants carried him in the church to Jerusalem and buried him in his tomb with his fathers. In the chariot, in the city of David. In the 11th year of Joram. Now watch what happens here. I'm about to close. Watch this. In the 11th year of Joram, the son of Ahab, Ahaziah, had become king over Judah. And they include that. Then we go to verse 30. Now I want you to watch what happens here as I get ready to close. Verse 30, going down to verse 37. Please watch this. Verse 30. Hallelujah. Verse 30. And when Jehu had come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard it. You all have heard about Jezebel. I remember when you talked about Jezebel. And y'all y'all know about Jezebel. But watch, this is why you see it. And anybody, try not to emulate Jezebel with this. Watch this now. Watch this. Then, all right, and then he entered the, at the gate and said, is, is it peace? Zimri, all right, so he's talking, all right, so then he, he looks up. So Jehu pursued him and he said, shoot him also in the chair. All right, then I got to go down to verse 28. I lost my spot here. All right, verse 28, all right, verse 28. Walk, walk with me, y'all. Walk, walk with me now. 30. 30. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And when Jehu had come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard it and put paint on her eyes and adorned her head and looked through the window. She was looking good, y'all. Had eyelash, I guess, but it don't say eyelash, but she, she put the paint over her eyes. And, and so I, I heard women talk about you don't want to look like Jezebel. So, I mean, but now, now her husband is dead, so I guess she's looking for a new man. She's looking out the window. So she's looking out the window. But like she, now, but Jehu knows how bad Jezebel is. She may look good, but Jehu is not going to be detracted by her good looks. Watch what happened. She may look good. All right, so get this now. You got to do more than look good, women. You may have on all the flashiness and have everything tight and stuff, yeah, but you got to do more than look good. You got to have something inside your heart that's right. Looking good ain't going to win you the best. Anyway, let me get back on track. Watch this now. Watch. Okay. And he looked. All right. And then as Jehu entered at the gate, she said, Is it peace, Jimri, murderer of your master? She was talking about him because he killed the king. She's talking stuff, looking out the window. But then he keeps on track. Watch what he says. And he looked up at the window. Verse 32. And said, who is on my side? Who? And two, two of three or three eunuchs looked out at him. Then he said, verse 33, throw her down. So they threw her down. And some of her blood splattered on the wall. And on the horses. And he, and he trampled her with his feet. I don't care how good you look. That's what I think of you. <laughs> Watch this. Lord, ever. some people might, might be saying he's not a gentleman. He's a man that's following God. Get this now. God said, wipe out that wicked woman. Wipe out and wipe out everybody else's wicked. So he stopped Jezebel. I mean, yes, Jezebel up on his feet. Mm -hmm. 
Verse 34, and when he had gone in, he ate and drank. Then he said, go now, see to this accursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. He said, she is, she, she is a king's daughter. We should at least bury her. So go out there and bury her. Go out there and bury Jezebel. What's left? I know. So we need to at least give her a burial. But guess what? Verse 35, so they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Remember they talked about the dogs eating her? There was not enough of her body to bury left because of her wickedness. Even her body was getting abused because of her wickedness. Quit telling people to lie about people at their burial. Just say, God bless you. Well, I'm gonna get off of that one. Anyway, anyway. I don't I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Get this down. Get this down. Watch this. I'm gonna get off of that. I want to look at this though. So then here it is, Jezebel. So Jezebel. So then it says this. So they, when they went to bury her, but they found no more than her, her skull and her feet and the palms of her hands. Therefore, they came back and told them and said, and he said, this is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Elijah, the Tishbite saying on the plot of ground at Jezreel, dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel. That was something that he said before. And it came true. And the corpse of Jezebel shall be as refuse on the surface of the field in the pot of Jezreel so that they shall not say, here lies Jezebel. She would not even have it. There was nobody that cared enough to bear her, her head in her palms. So the, and, and so the word of God came true and it said that there would not be enough of her left to bear, bury so that it would not be said that here lies Jezebel. And that's still true to the day. There can be, there's no spot where you can find here lies Jezebel. Nobody went and got her skull. Nobody went and got her hand and said, put our hand in her skull here. At least we got it. At least we can say, here lies part of Jezebel. How sad nobody was left. Nobody, nobody was left of Jezebel. Such an end for a wicked woman. And this woman called Jezebel, I'm, I'm closing now. This woman called Jezebel, whom many people know about, she, she had a chance to, to go another direction, but her and her husband, she, she, she had a chance to motivate her husband, they had to do the right thing, but she motivated him to do the wrong thing, to go with the popular gods and the pagan gods. And in the end, she died. I mean, she was a, Apparently, she was a fabulous-looking woman, but the looks wouldn't get it. Looks will not get you where you need with God. It's what you do with your heart. What you do with your heart. When God says it's time to clean house, are we ready to clean house? When God tells you it's time to make some changes, are you ready to make some changes? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, right now we come before you and we thank you, Lord. And Father, we ask, Lord, right now we, we take this moment, Lord, and bow our hearts and our heads before you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you help, Lord, to get us centered, Lord. Focused on you, Lord. There's nothing impossible for you, Lord. Please, Lord, we ask for your guidance and your direction, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would speak to every one of us, Lord. I ask that you would lead us by your spirit, Lord. Father, I ask for those 
Father, some who are struggling with issues, Lord, right now, Father, and, and wondering, Lord, and, and hurting, Lord, and, 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 and desperate, Lord, for an answer, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will give them a peace that surpasses all understanding right now. Call out to God. Accept Jesus. Say, I'm sorry for the wrongs that I've done. I'm sorry for doing wrong. Help me to live for you. Help me to do the right thing. Help me to do right. Help me to trust you, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you for your word today, Lord. Father, some of the parts today were so graphic, Lord. And Father, some of the, some of the, the, the duties, Lord, that were, were, were uh, uh, obeyed, Lord, and followed, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, Lord, they're so hard for our ears to hear sometime, Lord. But Father, we thank you, Lord, for your truth, Lord. Help us, Lord, to learn to trust you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be willing, Lord, to follow you. Help us, Lord, to be willing, Lord, to yield to you, Lord. Touch us, Lord, by your spirit, Lord. There's nothing impossible for you, Lord. Let us be led by your spirit, Lord. Let us be directed by your spirit, Lord. Oh, Lord, we love you. We need you, Lord. Say this. Repeat after me. Anyone that needs to do it right now, say, Jesus, I need you. I'm sorry for the wrong that I've done. Come into my heart. Help me to live right. I need you right now. Touch my life right now. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we praise you. We exalt you. You prayed that prayer. You've asked him in. You've, you've opened a door to, to start a new relationship with Jesus Christ, God Almighty. And he will, and he has mentioned he's going to meet you on the journey. Continue to trust him. Trust him. God loves you. Continue to trust him. Continue to trust him. He'll lead you by his spirit. There's so much truth in the word of God. There's some of the parts are graphic. And there's so much beauty in the Bible also. That's one of the better things about the Bible because there, there, there's truth, tough truth, beauty in it. But God's truth is, is, is relevant. God's truth is truth. And God will help us. Even this day, what we're wrestling with in our society and our world today, God is able to help every one of us. His truth is relevant. His truth is real. Trust him. Trust him with your life. He can be trusted. God bless you. We'll see you next week. You take care. Amen.